Hello and welcome to this educational video. If you look at the diseases that afflict the central nervous system in humans, they can be broadly classified into neurological diseases and psychiatric diseases. Among neurological diseases, there are two aspects which are of importance. One is the diagnostics that is diagnosing the disease, the other one is treatment or therapeutics. For many neurological disorders, diagnosing the disease itself is a challenge. That is why clinicians and scientists over the years have developed and evolved several tests that can be used to diagnose such neurological disorders. It could be blood test, it could be scanning, it could be different kinds of tests that can be done. Did you know that one of the most critical test that is required for diagnosis of neurological disorders is testing the muscle of a person. So, if you take the piece of a skeletal muscle from a person and test it, this gives lot of information about the person's condition in case of neurological disorders. So, this testing of the muscle requires taking out of the muscle which in clinical terms is called as muscle biopsy. So, you want to know more information about what this muscle biopsy, what is the importance and how it is done. Let us meet our expert Dr. Gayatri who is working as professor of neuropathology in Nimhans. Namaste Dr. Namaste. And welcome to this uh, program. So, uh, first of all what is this uh, muscle biopsy and are there different ways of doing this muscle biopsy? Okay, biopsy is taking a small fragment of a tissue. Yeah. For and subjecting it to examination. Okay. So, here it is a muscle. muscle. So, you take a piece of skeletal muscle, we are talking about the skeletal muscle. Okay. So, you take a piece of skeletal muscle okay. and then you subject it to investigations. Okay. So, how is it done? Mm -hmm. So, you have two methods of doing the biopsy. Mm -hmm. One is called the open biopsy open, okay. and the mm -hmm. other one is called as the needle biopsy. Needle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, most centers they use the needle biopsies. Mm -hmm. Now, these needles mm -hmm. are the specialized needles mm -hmm. which has a cannula, mm -hmm. a core, mm -hmm. so that once you push that into the body the, or the affected muscle, mm -hmm. you can pull out a fragment of the muscle okay. and then that can be subjected to investigations. Okay, so, that okay. is called the needle biopsy. Needle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the other one is an open biopsy. Mm -hmm. So, you have uh, to slit the skin open. Okay. So, even in the needle biopsy you may have to slit it, but then the slit will be a small slit. Okay. Whereas, for open biopsy the slit will be slightly larger. Mm -hmm. You open the skin up and then deep down will be the muscle. Okay. So, you take a fragment of the muscle from there and okay. then you subject it to investigations. Okay. Looks like a very painful procedure, Yes. Uh, but uh, both this whether it is the open or the needle. So, that can be done on any muscle is it or is there a designated muscle? in which you do it. Yeah. So, uh, once the clinicians examine the muscle, mm. they will also examine the power of the muscle. So, uh, once they uh, examine the power of the muscle, it is graded according to the MRC grade okay. into 5 types that is 0 to 5. 5 means it is a normal muscle okay. while if it is 3 or 4, it means that it is an involved muscle. Anything below 5 is an involved muscle. That means the muscle does not have the strength. Yes. Okay, as simple. Okay. So, that okay. particular muscle is chosen okay. for biopsy. Okay, okay. So, but both the techniques you have to have local anesthesia. So, ah, that was in fact my question because uh, you are talking about the needle biopsy. That means what I can imagine is you will be poking with a uh, needle. long needle. Yes. Or opening the skin for open biopsy. So, you will be applying some painkiller or some like you said the anesthesia. anesthesia. So, okay. local anesthesia. So, okay, local okay. anesthesia is for both needle as well as the open biopsy okay, okay. in adults. Whereas, in children and infants sometimes you may have to use uh, the um, Gen general, general anesthesia. General anesthesia. Okay, okay. okay, but how, how is this performed? Is it uh, a specialized technique that requires a trained uh, individual? Of course. Uh, like a pathologist or a neurologist who will do this? So, in most centers again it is the neurologist, a trained neurologist trained who neurologist. does the okay. who okay. does the biopsy, okay. but there are centers where the pathologists also do the biopsy. Ah. Say for example, in NIMS or Nizam's Hyderabad, okay. you have the pathologist doing the muscle okay. biopsy. Okay. Okay. So, but by and large it is the neurologist, a trained neurologist who okay. does okay. the biopsy. Okay, 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 okay. And uh, after you take it, 
uh, so there is a reason why we are taking the muscle biopsy because you are testing the muscle. So after you take out, so how do you transport it, how do you take it to the lab and what kind of tests you do, how, how, how is this? So there are various investigations one can um, do on the muscle biopsy. Mm. So number one is if there are center like our center has the facility for specialized technique, specialized staining procedures okay. like the enzyme histochemistry, immunohistochemistry. Okay. So our center, I will be telling you what our center does. Okay. So in our center what we do is mm -hmm. we take the fresh muscle. So mm -hmm. the fresh muscle is brought to the department of pathology. So when the neurologist is performing the biopsy, immediately uh, you have to take it no or yeah so what they do is uh, they take a gauze piece okay. and then that gauze piece is slightly moistened with saline so this okay, is okay. to keep uh -huh. the muscle, muscle. moist oh, okay, okay. so you wrap the muscle in mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. and that is transported to the lab quickly it has to come and yes it has to reach it? within 20 minutes to 20 the lab minutes because it might go bad uh, yes okay, okay. because okay. enzymes have to we have to test the what are called as mm -hmm. the enzyme histochemistry needs oh, to be okay, performed okay. Be on fresh so it has to be on the fresh tissue and it okay. has to reach faster so Correct. 20 okay. ideally it should reach within 20 mm -hmm. minutes mm -hmm. so once it reaches the lab mm -hmm. So what we do is we take a fragment of that tissue okay. and then we freeze it. It is called as flash freezing of the tissue. Uh, so you have an you have to flash freeze it with liquid nitrogen. So okay, you can't okay. directly dip it in liquid nitrogen, but then you need to use a via media to uh, freeze the tissue, okay, okay. and that is called as the isopentane. Okay, so you okay. take isopentane, you dip that isopentane in liquid nitrogen and allow it to cool. Okay. So once isopentin is sufficiently cold, so you take it out and then you freeze the muscle in that okay. and quickly transfer it into a cryostat. Now this cryostat is a machine, I would say, okay. wherein you cut the frozen sections. Okay, so what I understand is you are carefully freezing the muscle so that uh, its biology is intact. Yes. Its structure is intact. Okay, then it is easy instead of a fresh tissue which is a very soft you make it hard so that you can cut it yes that's what you're doing okay 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 so after imagine you have taken sections so can you see anything or you have to no after you after you collect the sections okay. so that that is a cryostat where you use cryo means it's under the cool conditions cool because it is already cold that yes it's, okay okay so you collect the sections onto what are called as the glass slides Okay. So you collect the sections on them and mm. then you subject it to enzyme and non-enzyme stains. Okay, okay. So you have various stains that can be mm, performed mm, on mm, them mm, mm, and each of these stains are very important because it will tell you what particular type of condition you are looking at. Okay. So there are certain uh, structural changes that the muscle fibers undergo in a okay. particular type of condition. Mm, mm, mm. So using these specialized stains mm. you can identify a okay. set of conditions. Okay, basically you are looking at the architecture of individual muscle muscles, fibers. Muscle fiber in that uh, section. Yes. Okay, okay. So and uh, you have said it is one is enzyme stain, another one is non-enzyme stain. So based on uh, this, then uh, you will know more information about the disease. Yes. Can you give us couple of examples as to what kind of information you can get, which a neurologist will not get by the examination? Okay. Like for example, any myopathy is a myopathy. I told you electrophysiologically it will tell you it is a myopathy. Now mm. under the myopathies, you have several conditions. Mm. So the most common one is the muscular dystrophies, okay. wherein the muscle fibers undergo degeneration. Okay. Then you have the metabolic disorders, mm. where it can be due to storage of some particular metabolite that is present mm -hmm. within the muscle fibers mm -hmm. or it could be because of some other congenital abnormality and mm -hmm. they are called as the congenital myopathies. Mm -hmm. So there are various forms. Mm -hmm. So by electrophysiological studies while it tells you only the myopathy or a neurogenic, okay. this particular test when you perform you can actually categorize them into various myopathies like okay. the muscular okay. dystrophies or the okay. metabolic okay disorders or the congenital myopathies. Oh, that means, let us say there are 5, 10 different diseases. They might have certain overlapping features. Clinical features. Clinical features. So, we will not be able to classify. 
Yes. So suppose you take the muscle and then do these tests, you will be able to tell which is a, a particular kind of myopathy, which is a congenital or it is what you call as a hereditary type of myopathy. Yes. Okay, okay. Or it can also be an acquired condition. So acquired. while all of these what I listed out are all the um, familial ones, you can okay. also have some of them which are not um, which are the acquired ones okay, okay, okay. like the inflammatory disorders. Okay, so, okay. all of these you can differentiate using these various stains, okay. the specialized stains that we do. So, once you stain it, you look at uh, normal light microscope, is it or yeah. is it you have to look in, uh, further like uh, electron microscope? No, I am coming to that. Okay, okay. So, this is only one fragment okay. that goes okay. into this cryosectioning. Okay, okay. So, what will we do with the remaining part of the muscle? Okay, so, okay. one fragment we always take for formalin fixation. So, uh -huh. that is again that is for light microscopy. Then Radio we microscope, have light microscopy is what we have in what we see in, in most, the, of the most of the laboratories you have okay, okay. wherein you use the light as a source, source. of energy okay, and okay. then you see the slides. Okay, okay. So, that is called as light, light microscopy. microscopy. Then you have a specialized one mm -hmm. which is called as the electron microscopic. Okay. So, for which you need to preserve the tissue separately. So, okay. while you have a fragment that goes for cryosectioning, mm -hmm. you have a fragment that goes into 10 percent formaldehyde. Mm -hmm. So, that is for the routine histological mm -hmm. stains mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. non-enzyme stains. Okay. Then you have another fixative called glutaraldehyde which is a 3 percent glutaraldehyde okay. wherein if you fix the tissue in that you can mm -hmm. see it under electron microscope. Electron microscope, okay. okay. Yes. So, whatever so, your information you did not get uh, by staining and in light microscopy that you will get uh, in the electron microscope. Is it like so, that? By and large, by using enzyme hysterochemistry, you can diagnose most of the conditions. Okay. But there are centers where they do not have this cryo facility. Ah. So, in from such centers, we do get a bio lot of biopsies from all over the country okay. and mm -hmm. adjoining countries also. Mm -hmm. So, they send in this fixative. Now, these two are called as the fixatives. Mm -hmm. So, they fix the tissue mm -hmm. either in formaldehyde or in glutaraldehyde mm -hmm. and send it to us. Okay. So, those of the ones which are fixed in formaldehyde goes in for the routine non-enzyme stains mm -hmm. whereas, those fixed in glutaraldehyde goes in for ultrastructure or uh, electron microscopic investigations. Okay, okay. So, there we can identify okay. what particular type of condition it is. Okay, okay. So, a combination of um, routine histology, enzymatic, non-enzymatic plus using uh, um, electron microscopy. So, you will be able to give a better diagnosis uh, back to the patient. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, this I think routinely people use uh, throughout the country. I mean, there are many facilities, many centers where you have this kind of a facility. Are there any advances? in this field where not only you have routine histology, you can use this biopsy for any other testing, is, yeah, it? Yeah. is it? So, um, I told you um, one fragment of the fresh tissue because we are fortunate to get fresh tissue. So, mm -hmm. we take a small fragment of the fresh tissue and mm -hmm. store it in minus 80 degrees. Now, okay. this mm -hmm. we can do additional tests if required. Okay, okay. So, there is one condition metabolic condition called as mitochondrial disorders okay, okay. wherein the mitochondria primarily are affected in mm -hmm. them and these are the primary mitochondrial disorders. Mm -hmm. So, while using this techniques that I told you enzyme hysterochemistry mm -hmm. or electron microscopy, mm -hmm. you can diagnose say about 30 percent of cases which are clinically suspected to have mitochondrial disorders. Okay. Well, the remaining we found that we are not able to diagnose even though the clinical pointers are there for a mitochondrial condition. Okay. So, then we have started this new testing called mm -hmm. as the respiratory chain assays. Mm -hmm. So, a fragment of the tissue goes in mm -hmm. for uh, the various respiratory chains mm -hmm. that we do. Okay. So, then we also use this muscle for isolating the DNA. Ah, okay, so, for okay, genetic okay. analysis. Right. These so. days, I, that is what I was uh, coming to because many diseases have now been considered as genetic diseases, yes. hereditary conditions. So, you can use the muscle also to do genetic testing. Yes. So, how do you do? You take it take the tissue and we isolate the DNA from that okay. and that we send it for uh, genetic analysis. Okay, 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 okay. So, it is a combination that started with uh, just a piece of muscle 
and then you have uh, bifurcate uh, sorry uh, classified into so many things you take one piece for uh, um, uh, you know uh, cryo sectioning and another one for formalin yes is it and then you have electron microscopy then you have biochemistry then you have genetics yes so uh, what do you think is the future of uh, muzzle biopsy if i may ask a philosophical question do you think muzzle biopsy is here to stay or do you think at a later stage there might be other, other techniques which will say uh, which will uh, clear the way to some other technology saying muzzle biopsy is no longer required now as of now because um, genetic disorder most of them are genetic disorders there are some conditions where you have the single gene that is involved okay. if i can give an example of duchenne muscular dystrophy okay. so which is the most common muscular dystrophy it's just okay. one gene that is involved so by using uh, the genetic or even the blood sample where you can isolate the dna and then get the genetics done mm-hmm. so you can diagnose that particular condition okay. whereas you have this congenital myopathies i was talking to you about okay. mm-hmm. so these conditions are clinically and genetically they are heterogeneous Okay, okay okay so mm-hmm. in those conditions you definitely require a muscle biopsy aha uh-huh. where it is not straight forward no, it is not straight forward that uh, duchenne uh, what is it duchenne muscular, duchenne muscular dystrophy. dystrophy where uh, a single blood test will tell you whether the person has a disease or not yes sometimes you are not able to get the information from a blood test so you need muzzle biopsy you need that muscle biopsy we have not reached a stage where we can get rid of the concept of muzzle biopsy yes muzzle biopsy is here to stay in fact it's possible that more and more new tests can be evolved using the uh, muzzle biopsy exactly yes uh, thank you thank you for providing elaborate information about uh, muzzle biopsy how it is done who does it and what are the tests that will that is performed on muzzle biopsy so that you can get more information about disease thank you okay. stay